We're asked to solve the irrational inequality express the solution using inequalities and interval notation. We'll also graph the solution on the number line. To solve a rational inequality, the first step is to factor the numerator and denominator, which in our case has already been done. We have linear factors. Step two, we determine the zeros of the numerator and denominator. We do this by setting the numerator and denominator equal to zero and solving for x. To find the zero of the numerator, we set x plus seven equal to zero and solve for x. Subtracting seven on both sides, we have x equals negative seven. To find the zero of the denominator, we set x minus five equal to zero and solve for x which gives us x equals positive five. Step three, we plot the zeros on the number line. The zeros of the denominator are always open points. The zeros of the numerator are open or closed points based upon the original inequality symbol. In our case, the zero of the denominator is five. At this value, we have division by zero, which is undefined, which is why we make an open point at x equals positive five. Next, the zero of the numerator is negative seven. Because the original inequality is greater than or equal to, because of the equal part, we make a closed point at x equals negative seven. At x equals negative seven, the fraction on the left is equal to zero, and because zero greater than or equal to zero is true, we make a closed point indicating this value is a solution. Notice these three points divide the number line into three subintervals, one on the left, one in the middle, and one on the right. The last step is to test each interval to see if all the values in the interval do satisfy the inequality. To do this, we select test values in each interval. If the test value is true, the entire interval is true, and it's part of the solution. If the test value is false, the entire interval is false and not part of the solution. Let's go ahead and pick test values. Let's use x equals negative eight, x equals zero, and x equals six. So when x equals negative eight, the numerator is negative eight plus seven or negative one. The denominator is negative eight minus five, which is negative 13. This simplifies to positive one thirteenth, and one thirteenth greater than or equal to zero is true, and therefore the entire interval on the left is true. Let's go ahead and graph the interval. x less than or equal to negative seven is part of the solution to the rational inequality. And now let's test x equals zero. When x is equal to zero, the numerator is seven. The denominator is negative five. This gives us negative seven fifths. Negative seven fifths greater than or equal to zero is actually false. Negative seven fifths is not greater than or equal to zero. And therefore the entire interval in the middle is false and we do not shade that interval. And now finally we test x equals six. At x equals six, the numerator is 13. The denominator is positive one. 13 greater than or equal to zero is true. And therefore the entire interval on the right is true. We graph the interval where x is greater than positive five. Now that we have the graph of the solution, let's express the solution using inequalities and interval notation. Using inequalities, on the left we have x less than or equal to negative seven, or x greater than positive five on the right. Using interval notation on the left, we have the interval from negative infinity to negative seven. Because negative seven is in the interval, we use a square bracket. Union, on the right we have the open interval from five to infinity. I hope you found this helpful.